Mindsetters, welcome to an exciting, exciting show on Learn Extra Live. I'm Katleho and today we're with Hayley. Hi Katleho. How are Hi you Hayley? I'm well. You? Today we're doing grade 10 maths literacy. What's up today Hayley? Today we're going to do revision. Okay. We're going to do revision of basically the whole year's okay, work awesome. because I'm sure the exams are based on everything. Mm -hmm. So. I think I'm going to go to my spot. Yeah, sure you can. <laughs> I know revision is very exciting because exams are near and some of you have even said that you're actually writing tomorrow. So stay tuned and stay glued because then, then tomorrow is actually just going to be a breeze. Remember that if you have any questions whatsoever, any questions on anything that you've done this term, there is many ways to get a hold of us. Facebook.com forward slash learn extra. You guys know that one well. And our Twitter handle is at learn extra. And today we're also taking a few callers. The first five callers today will be receiving the books, the winter school books for grade 10 maths literacy or life science or whatever subjects you do. Remember, our number is 086 105 8262. And that's 086 one zero five eight two six two remember those first five callers and we will be taking some questions so make sure your questions are extra perfect <laughs> hey, <Hayley>. extra perfect <laughs> thanks Katejo. hi grade tens um, welcome to today's show but before we start i think the most important is let's work out our numbers so Katlejo, last week yes. we were on one one five six two what are we on today we're on twelve one zero four. One zero four. Twelve thousand yes. one hundred and four. Clearly, it. our page is getting a little bit more. It is. It um, is. Traffic, should we say? Yeah. Um, because I think it's exam time. But guys, you can use us all term long and all year long. But tell your friends how important and how helpful we can actually be. Because I'm sure we can be. Okay, awesome. Do you want to show them maybe the page? I tell you what, before we go, I'm going to ask Katlejo to come over here to show you the site. So let's awesome. find it. There you go. So you guys know our page already. You know how it works. And you know that you can comment and also comment on our status. If you have any questions, don't inbox us because then, you know, those private messages go elsewhere. And if you comment <laughs> directly on the page or on the timeline, we can get your questions directly. Also, the winter school books, as you can see, if you haven't received one, then <coughs> you can get one, download all the winter school books. And also the, the winter school schedule is also here for you. Our so make sure that you number? can... Yes, also. Our telephone number, our Twitter handle, the ev everything is on this page, guys. You guys know this page too well. You know it better than Haley does as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and Hayley. guys, remember that you can also post on somebody else's comments. So, um, you know, help each other like I know you've been doing all along. So, okay, there's yes. our page. And let's carry on with today's lesson. So, those were our numbers. And... We're going to start off with calculator skills. Now, remember we said to you at the beginning of the year, it seems like such a long time ago, Katlejo, <laughs> we can use for grade 10 maths lit, we only need the simple four function calculator. That's the one with the plus minus times and divide. You do not need a scientific calculator. So the whole lesson today, I have got a scientific calculator up on the board, but I'm going to show you how to do it without the calculator. So let's start with some revision. And the first thing when it comes to calculator skills is we need to remember our bod mass. So I'm going to write it here. We've got our bod mass. And it might be a good idea for you to just write it on top of your paper so that you don't forget. So it's the brackets. And then of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So that is the order of operations. So it's really important when we start doing the calculations that we use that. Let's go to some examples. So I've got the sum of 27,45 divided by 3 over 4. So first of all, I'm going to deal with the fraction. So and when we divide by a fraction, now you can do this on your calculator. You can actually say 3 over 4. So let's get my calculator out. And I can say 3 divided by 4. And write that number out. That's 0, 0,75. So on my, on my page, I'm going to write that in. It is 0, 0,75. And then I'm going to take 27,45 and divide by 0, 0,75. So my calculator again. I'm going to now say 27,45. And remember, whenever you're working on the calculator, to check that you're actually entering the numbers exactly the way you've written them. 
So 27,45 divided by 0 0,75, and we get an answer of 36.6. Now our question said 36.6. So that answer is 36.6. Our question says correct to one decimal place. So I have one decimal place, and I can move on to the next question. Always go back and reread the question. Next sum looks a little bit harder. Now, if you have a scientific calculator and that's what you're using, then guys, you can just enter it exactly the way you see it. But I'm going to show you how to do it if you don't have. We're first going to do our brackets. So 4 minus 6 is minus 2. Then we gain 2. Remember our bod mass? I'm just going to write it again. We gain 2. Divide first and multiply. Well, we can multiply and divide kind of at the same time. So we're going to say 6 times 3 is 18. We're going to divide by negative 2, and we're going to add the 2 at the end. So 18 divided by minus 2 gives us minus 9, and then I'm going to have my 2 plus minus 9. I'm going to end up with an answer of negative 7. I didn't need the calculator, but you can use the calculator. Use the calculator to double check. And in actual fact, I suggest you use the calculator. You've got the calculator, then rather use it. All right, next one is fractions. So when dealing with fractions, if you don't have the fraction button on the calculator because you don't have a scientific one, then you can actually type that in. That's 2 divided by 3. But let's work with this. We're going to first do the multiply. And when we multiply fractions, we can cancel out so we can actually see that 3 goes into 3 once and goes into 6 twice. Then we multiply the top and multiply the bottom. So I end up with 5 over multiply the bottom 8. And then I'm going to add my 2 thirds. And then I want a common multiple. So I'm going to see um, 8 and 3 common. We're going to make it out of 24 plus 24. So 8 goes into 24 how many times? And if you want, guys, I mean, you can use the calculator. So we can say I've got the calculator, and I'm going to say, well, 24 divided by 8, just to show you, is 3, just in case you forgot your times table. Um, so it's 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Oops, I need a pen color. 3 goes into 24 how many times? Okay, and we could do the same thing, but clearly it's 8. Um, 8 times 2 is 16, and then I add those. 15 plus 16 is 31 over 24. Now, they asked me to do it to one decimal place, so at this point, I'm actually going to type it into my calculator and get the calculator up, and I'll say 31 divided by 24 and get an answer, and I see that it's 1,3. Remember your rounding. So that was, let's write it out in another color, 1,29. Remember when we're rounding, I suggest you underline the number we're rounding to. Look at the number next to it. Is it 5 or bigger? Then the number increases. So that becomes 1,3. Right. Next one. Just in case you get a kind of question that looks like this. In this case, we need to add first. This sum is not the same as the square root of 4 plus the square root of 25. It is not the same. What we really need to do is we need to add the numbers under my square root. So I end up with square root of 29. And then again, I can take my calculator out and I can square root 29 and I get an answer of 5 comma 4. Remember your rounding? So it was 5 comma 3, 8, or 5 comma 4. I feel like I'm flying through these sums. Do you think I'm going a little bit too fast? I, I, hope think, not. I think they've got it. <laughs> they've got it. <laughs> it is revision, you're right. Okay, lastly, I've got a sum that seems a little bit random and a little bit more mathematical. But what I want to just point out is that 2 squared. Now, if you don't have a scientific calculator and you don't have that little squared button, what do we do? Well, what does 2 squared mean? It means 2 times 2. And this is plus 3 times 3. And we're going to minus 1.2 times 1.2 
times 1.2. That's basically what the square and the cube means. That we just and remember, it's not times 2 or times 3. It's times by itself, twice or three times. So we could do this calculation. So we've got 4 plus 9, and I'm going to minus. Now, this I'm going to do on the calculator. And I'll show you 1.2 cubed, if I've got the button, is 1,728. But before I write that out, I'm going to show you the same thing. 1.2 times 1.2 times 1.2. And we get the same answer of 1,728. Now remember, we're rounding to one decimal place. So it becomes 1,7. So our color. So we're minusing 1,7. And now we could do this again on the calculator. So let's get our calculator out. And we say 4 plus 9 minus 1,7. And we get an answer of 11,3. The real important thing with calculator work is one, to check that you're actually putting in the right numbers and that you know how to use your calculator. But hopefully by June, and I'm sure Katleko will agree with me, you should know how to use your calculator. Don't lose your calculator just before exams and never get a new one just before exams. <laughs> so, <laughs> how's that for good, yeah. <laughs> good advice? <laughs> but you've been practicing with your calculator, so you know how it works. And that's the most important thing. So, I think let's move on to the next part of the question. Right, we've got percentage calculations. So, again, a little bit of revision. Let's do use yellow for a change. Write 0, 0,33 as a percentage. As soon as you see the word percentage, what do we know we have to do? We have to times by 100. So all I'm going to do in this case is say 0, 0,33 times by 100. And that's going to give me the number as a percentage. And again, I can use my calculator. 0, 0,33 times by 100. And it's 33%. Now, I know sometimes your instinct is to just put the answer because you know the answer. Guys, double check it on the calculator. It just makes a little bit of sense. You've got that. You probably will have the time to do it. So check it on the calculator. Don't assume that your mental arithmetic is good. It might be. It might be perfect. But rather, check the technology. <laughs> right. We've got to write 5,07% as a decimal fraction. Well, what does a decimal fraction mean? Okay, and correct to one decimal place. First of all, I'm going to write it as a fraction. So 5,07% is the same as 5,07 out of 100, because that is my fraction. Now I want it as a decimal, so I'm going to type that into my calculator, and I've got 5,07 divided by 100, and we get an answer of 0, 0,507. 0, 0,0507. And it asks correct to one decimal place. So clearly, underlining the wrong one there, I'm underlining the first decimal place, looking at the number afterwards, and it becomes 0, 0,1. That's a decimal fraction. Uh, a decimal fraction. Okay, next. We need to calculate 14% of 43 rand 81. So we take our number, 43 rand 81. And if you don't want the units, you can leave the units out. But remember, we're dealing with money. So we need our units at the end. And in this particular question, they're not going to tell us how many uh, decimal places there are because we know money needs to be two decimal places. So we're going to times it because we're working out a percentage times it by 14 percent and your calculators can do that even your five four function calculator can do this 43 comma 81 times by 14 percent and press equals and I get a number of six comma one three three four which I'm going to round to two decimal places so it's six comma one three And remember it was rands, 
and that is 14%. Now make sure that you've read the question correctly. They're just asking for the percentage. And whenever they see 14%, I immediately think VAT because VAT is 14%. So I always check, are they asking me to include the VAT or to exclude the VAT or whatever it is they're dealing with the VAT, but in this case, they just want to know what that was. Okay. Next question. The price of petrol is due to decrease by 18,5% next month. That would be so nice <laughs> if it decreased. I know I we've agree. just had a decrease. Yeah. It would be nice to have another decrease. Another one and another one and another <laughs> and one. And another one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so it's decreasing by 18,5% next month. A litre of petrol at the moment costs 11 Rand 52. What will the new price be next month? Now we're expecting a number that is lower because we are decreasing it. So I'm going to do this. I can do this two ways. In fact, I'm going to show you both ways. First, I'm going to say, well, okay, I've got 11 Rand and 52 cents. And I'm going to first work out what the decrease is. So I'm going to times it by 18,5%. And remember, we always, always multiply percentage. So we're going to times it by 18,5% and get our answer. Now let's do that on the calculator. I want 11 Rand and 52 cents times by 18,5%. And I get an answer of 2 Rand 13. Rounded off is 2 Rand and 13 cents. And now I need to decrease it. So I'm going to take my amount, which was 11 Rand 52, and minus this 2 Rand 13. Oh, it would be so nice to have a 2 Rand decrease oh in petrol. Okay, <laughs> so let's get our calculator out again. We've got 11 Rand 52 minus. 2 Rand 13, and we will be paying 9 Rand 39. 9 Rand 39. Right, I'm going to quickly show you another way of doing this, kind of in one step. So let us find more space. I'm going to go to the end here and find some more space. So I had my numbers of 11 Rand 52, and I wanted to decrease it, I'm just going to write it out again, by 18,5%. So first of all, if you remember, I took that 11 Rand 52 and I minus the percentage amount. So I'm going to work that out as what did I minus? I took 100%, that was my 11 Rand 52, and minus 18,5%. So let's just do that on the calculator quickly. So I've got 100 minus 18,5. And that gives me 81,5%. So that is 81,5%. So if I now take my amount of petrol and multiply it by that decrease, 11 Rand 52, and I times it by the 81,5%, I should get the same answer. So let's double check that. So clear that. I've got 11 Rand 52 times by 81,5%. And we get an answer of 9,39. 9,39. Was that the same answer? 9,39. So and I move up and just take 9,39. It was exactly the same answer. So you can do it in one step. You can do it for decrease and increase. Decrease, you take 100% and minus the percentage you're working with. And for increase, you take 100% and you add the percentage that you're working with. So do you think I've got time to show them a quick increase? I oh know that's a different question. That's a would you like to take a break now or carry you know on what? with one quickly? Maybe we should just take a little okay. break now okay. and then... Uh, we can come back and I'll do the increase when okay. we get back. Awesome. <laughs> Over to you, Katleha. So guys, this break, if you don't have a calculator next to you, now you know that you should get it right now. See you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I know that was a really quick break because it 
Boo, sorry. That's because there's lots to go through this lesson. Um, I want to remind you about our winter school dates. Remember, winter school is coming up real soon. Although we won't be here, we'll be back on the 16th. 16th of July, that's Learn Extra Live Shows will be back on the 16th of July when you guys come back from your holidays. Therefore, the winter school begins on the 13th, the 14th and the 15th for grade 10s. Make sure that you are still tuned in. Although you might be on holiday, your brain doesn't want to be on holiday. It wants to do more work. So make sure that you tune in from the 13th to the 15th. And remember that also that live shows will be carrying on on the 16th of July. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I hope that you got all those dates. Um, but just know that we're here for you. So even in the holidays, we are here for you. Okay. Uh, before the break, we were doing a percentage um, decrease, well, a decrease by percentage. Now I'm just going to do an increase by percentage. I'm leaving out question five for now. I'm just going to go to question six, and because this is a percent where we increase by percentage. So let's see. The municipality recently announced it would increase the cost of water by 22,5% per kiloliter. The current cost of water is 3 rand 78 per kiloliter. What will the new price be? And I'm going to show you how to do this in the simple one step. We're going to take our amount, 3 rand and 78 cents, and we're going to times it by, and now I'm taking 100% plus 22 rand, uh, sorry, 22,5%. So I don't need the brackets, but I just want to ensure that we actually add them first. So I'm going to do it in two steps. So I'm just going to say, well, okay, we got 3 rand 78 times by 122,5%. And now we get out our calculator. And we do that on the calculator. So it's 3,78 times by 122,5%. And we get an answer of 4 rand 63. Remember, round off two decimal places. So it was four rand and 63 cents. And that was our increase. So you can do it the other way, where you calculate the percentage first and then add them at the end. But this might be easier. But again, it's what you've gotten used to. So if you want to learn the system, then maybe just do a couple of practice sums. Let's go back to question five. Mr. A. Small wants to increase the price of shoes from 178 rand to 198 rand per pair. What is the percentage increase? Now, we're not increasing by percentage. We're looking for the percentage increase. So the way we do this is we have to find our change, the amount of change. So I'm going to tell you that it's a simple formula. Let's find are we going to work out our change? So that's my new number minus my old number. And then I need to divide it by my original. So I like to use the words new and old rather than original. And I want to work it out as a percentage, so I'm going to times by 100. So it is my change. So what is my change? Let's do the calculation. It is 198 minus 178. Okay? And I leave out the rand sign, except I've crossed out my one. So that is the amount of change. And we're looking at it as a percentage, so we're going to times by 100, of the original amount, so it's of 178. Now we can do this on our calculators, and if you are using a scientific calculator, you can use your fraction button. But if you're not, please remember your bod mass. So we're going to do our change, which is 198 minus 178, and press equals, because I need to minus before I divide. So the answer is 20. Then I'm going to divide that by the original amount, press equals, times by 100. So, and I'm going to get 11,24%. So it's 11,24% increase. Now remember, if you do this calculation and you get a negative number, we can't have a negative percent. It doesn't make sense because a percentage is something out of 100. 
What the negative means is that it is a decrease. So take away that negative, don't put it into the sum, or into your answer, but say it is a decrease. Oh, that explains that. And let's move on to the next question about percentage. The price of tyres has just increased by 16,2%. The new price is 528 Rand per tyre. What was the old price? And this is one where it's a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging, because I know your instinct is to say, well, okay, if I work out 16,2% of 528, then I've got the increase and I can just minus it. That's not going to give you the proper answer. So let's try to write this out mathematical terms. So what do I have? I have my old price and I increased it by, and I'm going to make it 116,2%. And my new price is 528. And this is where it's so important to use the new system that I've shown you to add the percentage. Now I want to get my old price on its own. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to get rid of this 116%. Oops, I lost a 2, 2%. Because those then cancel out, and I'm going to do that on the other side. So on my calculator now, all I need to do is type in that number. So let's get the calculator out, and I've got 50 528 Rand divided by 116,2% and 454 Rand and 39 cents. 45439. 454 Rand and 39 cents. What is important is that I can increase that by 16.2% and, and I get my correct answer, 528. So double check your working, double check that you've actually got the right number because if you now increase it by the percentage and you don't get the right answer, then you know you've made a mistake somewhere. Hey, I think that takes us through percentage. Let's see what the next section is. Ratio. Right, remember ratio? is a relationship of one number to another. So if I had the number of A to B, or one to two, and I can write it with a colon, I can write it in words, A is to B, and I can write it as a fraction. And what's so nice about a fraction is then I can work with it like it's a fraction. So I hope you remember this lesson. Let's do a, a calculation and we should be able to go from there. In a class of 36 learners, there are 12 learners, let's underline that. There are 12 learners who write with their left hand. I think that should be writers in W-R-I-T. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's get a white, white thing. Okay, let's just cross it out. To write with their left hand. The rest are right-handed. What is the ratio of left-handed to right-handed? So, what do we know? We know that in total there are 36 learners. How many learners write with the left hand? It is 12. So if I minus the one to the other, I'm going to get the number of learners who are right-handed. So we've got 24 right-handed learners. Now they want the ratio of left-handed to right-handed, so my left-handed needs to be my first number. Now let's change colour to show you. So my left-handed, there were 12. My right-handed, there were 24. Now, to get it into simplest form, we need to try and simplify that. So if I have it as a fraction, 12 over 24, <coughs> I can see that that is 1 over 2. So my fraction is 1 to 2. On your calculators, you can actually just divide one by the other. So 12 divided by 24. If you're using a scientific calculator, it gives you the ratio, but if not, you're going to end up with 0 0,5, which you will then know is 1 half, 1 to 2. Hey, let's do the next question. A mother wants to divide 48 sweets, oh, lost my pen, 
48 suites between her three children, Sibo, Tavo, Tato, and Precious, in a ratio of one to two to three. Now remember when we have a ratio that they are in the same order as they were written. So one part is going to go to Sibo, two parts to Tato, and Precious is going to get three parts. Clearly she was a whole lot better than the other <laughs> two. <laughs> because of their recent behavior, well, there you go. How many sweets does each child get? Right, so what do we know about the sum? We know that we have 48 sweets. And we know that we need to divide it to three children. But they each get a different ratio. We've got a ratio of one to two to three. So how many parts do I have in total? So if I look at my ratio and I add those all up, I'm seeing that I get six parts. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 48 and I'm going to divide it by six. And you might need your calculator for that, but it's eight sweets per part. But that's not how many sweets they each received, because they each received a ratio. So there were eight parts. We had, who was the first one? I can't remember the names. Sibo got one. So we're going to put Sibo, Tato, and Precious. And a little bit more space here. So Sibo got one part. So we're going to say one times eight. Tato got two parts, two times eight because there are eight per part, and Precious got three times eight. So clearly they got eight sweets to 16 sweets to 24 sweets. And I know if those were my kids, they would be up in <laughs> absolute arms. Yeah. Not fair. <laughs> okay. That's what I would You get <laughs> more and I get less. <laughs> but clearly you need to behave to get sweets in those ratios. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to the next question, I think. Now we're dealing with time. Remember your time? We've got analog clock. We've got a digital clock. The difference between AM and PM. Remember things like... Um, there's 24 hours in a day, that there's 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in an hour. Uh, in a minute. 60, <laughs> 60 seconds in a minute. Thank God Ketlech was here because I don't know. <laughs> okay. Remember things like there's seven days in a week. If they ask you for month calculations, that you can assume it's a four-week month and just tell the examiner so and that there's there will then be four weeks in the month and there's 365 days in a year. Have I left any out? 12 months in a year? Yeah. What have I left out? Mm. I think I've pretty much covered yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do some calculations. That's the best part. Right, they want us to calculate a quarter of nine hours and 22 minutes and to give our answer in hours, minutes and seconds. Now what's so nice about the subject and really what you can get your teeth into kind of thing is that there's always more than one way of doing things. Well, most times. So think about the question and we could do, well, a quarter of nine hours and then a quarter of 22 minutes. We could do it that way. We could convert nine hours to minutes and work out a quarter of that and then convert back. Or maybe we should do it more than one way. So let's first start a quarter of nine hours. Well, what I'm going to do quite easily is I'm going to say, well, a quarter of eight hours, because that's easier to do. Oh, and I've written a half. A quarter of eight hours. So that is two hours. Then I've also still got a quarter of one hour. And now I'm going to minutes, because that's 60. I'll write it here like this. It's 60, 60 minutes. A quarter of 60 minutes is 15 minutes. So I can do it this and say, well, that's two hours and 15 minutes. And now what's a quarter of 22? And work that out. I think I might need more space. So let's, let's find space here. Let's carry on down here. So I've got a quarter of 22. And you might need a calculator for that. So on our calculator, how are we going to do that on a calculator? Well, we can say 22 divided by 4. And I get 5 comma 5. 
So that was 5,5 five minutes. But remember, we already had 2 hours and 15 minutes. Okay, And they want our answer in hours, minutes, and seconds. So let's see. Let's add these up. We've got 2 hours. 15 plus 5 is 20 minutes. And what's really important is that 0, 0,5. Now, if you're struggling with this, then I'm going to show you to do it on your calculator, but half a minute is 30 seconds. But remember, it's not 50 seconds. I think that's my pet hate. But on your calculator, let's see, go back to our calculator. We had 5 mi minutes, or 5,5 five five minutes. So let's minus our minutes to be left with our seconds. Take that and times by 60. And you'll see that it's 30 seconds, half a minute. Okay, so we could have done this. Let's go back to the sum. We could have done it in one step. We could have taken our minutes. Let's do it on a different color. Right, we had 9 hours and 22 minutes. So let's say 9 times 60. And we get on the calculator. Uh, calculator. So 9 times 60 is 540 minutes plus my 22 is 562 minutes. Then if I divide that by 4, I end up with 140,5 minutes. So let's write that in. So it's 140,5 minutes. And then in hours, well again, I can see two hours is 120, so, but let's change it, show you on the calculator, I'm going to divide that by 60. And I get an answer of 2,34, but now remember, that's two hours, the comma 34, we need to multiply by 60 to get the difference. So I'm going to minus the two, and take that answer, times by 60. And you'll see that I get my 20, 5 again. So either way you could do it. There's lots of different ways of doing calculations. But I think on this time calculation, yeah. I think maybe it's time I think to it's take time. a break. <laughs> <laughs> I just so want to remind you guys that the questions are up on Facebook. <laughs> so if you guys are quick and on the ball, perhaps you can answer those before we even do them so that you can check with Haley whether they're right or not, and then you can correct it, obviously. So during the breaks, just quickly get your pen and paper and do the sums really fast so that when we get back, you know your stuff and you know exactly when you went, where you went wrong. See you after the break. Hi Mindsetters, welcome back from that really quick fast break. I wasn't even ready for that, sure. I know that you guys are on the ball on Facebook and I'm really enjoying the interaction between you. The questions, the questions are all up. Every question that Haley has done today, what you can do is that you can actually write them down or just save them on your phone because it is on Facebook or on your computer or print them if you have that and do them as revision as the year progresses as well. So for your exams, you are so ready. It won't be funny. <laughs> Over to you, Haley. <laughs> Thanks, Katleko. Okay, so we were busy with time and I was explaining that we can do things more than one way. The most important thing when you're answering a question now that you're doing exams is make sure that your teacher and your examiner actually knows what you're saying and can follow your train of thought. I always say to my kids that I teach, if you write it so that I can understand it, I'll probably find the marks. So <laughs> let's carry on with time. Right, we've got a plane takes off from OR Tambo at International Airport at 7.35 a.m. and travels for two hours and 20 minutes. At what time does the plane land in Cape Town? So what we're doing is we're just adding time. We've got 7.35, and we're going to add 2 hours and 20 minutes. And we're going to add, and I'm going to add it across, like uh, down like this. Um, what is important to note that every time, okay, so we've got 5, 5, 
and 9. But what is important to note is that when you go past 60, you need to add another hour. So let's quickly do another one that I know is not on the board. But let's assume that we left at 7.35 in the morning and we flew for maybe 3 hours and 40 minutes. Let's try that. So I'm going to add my 5 and then I've got 3 and 4, which is 7. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that for now and then 3 and 7 is 10. But I can't go... 10 hours and 75 minutes. That actually makes it another whole hour. So I'm going to minus 60 from here, a little bit more space, to just show you whoops, that that is in actual fact 15 minutes and it needs to be 11 hours. So just remember that your time is always out of 60 and it is not out of 100. Just makes it a little bit kind of more challenging. Okay, let's move on to the next section. So, our next section is conversion. We need to convert between units. And remember, you can use King Henry. I think I did that with them when we were teaching. Um, but the conversions, what's most important is, I always tell my kids, you have this little cheat with you because you've got a ruler. And from your ruler, so I'm quickly going to do conversion. From your ruler, you know that 10 millimeters is one centimeter. And we know that centimeters is also a unit of 10. We know it's not 10. So it's 100 centimeters is one meter because it's kind of like a big step. And if you had to take your ruler and measure it, you'll see that it's about 100. And a kilometer is uh, even bigger than that. So it's 1,000 meters in one kilometer. And then what's important is when we go from a big number to a small number, I'm going from 10 to 1, I divide and from small number to a big number, I multiply. Now, if you can write that out on your paper, it'll make things a whole lot easier. So right, let's do the conversions. 0, 0,33 meters to centimeters. So I'm going to get out a, color p a different color. I'm going along that line. I'm going from meters to centimeters, which means I need to multiply. And I'm multiplying by 100. So it is 0, 0,33 times by 100 and funnily enough this number came up earlier <laughs> and that was 33 centimeters okay, 33 centimeters don't forget to add your units there's always a reference right let's do the next one 452 millimeters to meters so i'm going to try delete this line move it and delete it let's get a different color Right, I'm going from millimeters to meters. In fact, I always want to go from one side of this table to the other. So, and I'm going from this side, I need to divide. I'm going from there to there, I'm going to divide. So I'm going to take my 452, and I'm going to divide it by, to get to centimeters, by 10, and then to get to meters, so I go back there, by 100. So I'm dividing by 1,000. And I get the answer. You can do this on your calculator, 0, 0,452. 0, 0,452, and remember your units. Okay, 4,5 liters to milliliters. Well, similar to meters, meters and there are 1,000. So this is actually an important fact. There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. And you know what, I always think about things that I know, like think about, um, I've got a bottle of water, which is, uh, bring into the studio, uh, 750 mils. I know it's just less than a litre. Or think about milk, um, milk you buy either in litre or two litre bottle, how many glasses? So you realise that it's a thousand millilitres in a litre. So 4,5 litres to millilitres, I'm going to times by a thousand and I'll get 4,500 millilitres. And then lastly, I've got a cube has a volume of that many centimeters cubed. What is the volume of the cube in meters cubed? Now, when we're converting cubed v values, we need to do the conversion three times. So I'm going to be dividing because I'm going from centimeters to meters. So I'm going to take my answer. 
125,000 and I'm going to be dividing by 100 actually cubed. Now on your calculator you can write this as 100 times 100 times 100 or in actual fact that is a million. So we are dividing by a million. So if you have a scientific calculator, you can say one, two, five, and then one, two, three zeros, divide by a hundred cubed. And if you don't, you can use uh, by a million. So it's zero comma one, two, five. So that answer is zero comma one, two, five. And what are we now dealing with? Meters cubed. But don't forget your units. I think I've got time to go on to finding measurements. So let's look at this question. It says find the surface area and volume of the cylinder, which has a diameter of six centimeters and a height of 15 centimeters. Now I'd like to draw the, the diagram. So I'm going to quickly draw it. Let's find the space here. Whoops, too far. So I have a what did it tell me? It told me I had a radius. Did it say radius or diameter? It had a diameter of six centimeters and it had a height of 15. So first step, whenever you've got a cylinder, is first work out the radius. So remember our radius is our diameter divided by two. So our radius is three centimeters. Now, let's work out our surface area first. Let's actually find a little bit more space. Our surface area, and remember they're going to give you the formulas. Your surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Always write out the formula, it also helps. And we're going to substitute. Right, so that is 2 times pi times my radius squared plus 2 times pi times my radius times my height. And then on your calculator, you can just do that quite simply. We're going to do, let's clear that right. I've got 2 times pi times by 3 squared plus 2 times pi times 3 times 15. And we get an answer of 100. And uh, don't forget that if you've got a scientific calculator, you need to convert that to values. It's 339,3. 339,3. And what was that? It was centimeters squared. Surface areas were squared. I think I've got time to do the volume. What do you say? Volume of my cylinder is pi r squared oops, times the height. That's my volume. So again, we're going to substitute a little bit more space. Pi times my radius times my height, my radius squared. And again, Type that into your calculator. Look out for questions where they say use pi equals 3 comma 1 4. So it just makes it easier for your examiner to mark if you use the directions that they've given you. But let's assume we don't. So we've got pi times 3 squared times by the height of 15 and we get 424 comma 11. 424 comma 11. What we'll be dealing with? Centimeters. And remember, it's volume. It's three-dimensional, so it is cubed. So don't forget your units. They really, really are important. So have I got time to go on to the next question, do you think? Um, what's the next question on this? Uh, next whole question, I think I've got tables and equations. Okay. Should we try this quickly? I know what our time is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we don't have time to go on to the next question, Kay. but we're going to put it onto Facebook. So what we haven't done is tables and equations and probability, but those are the last few lessons. So I think that uh, you guys can manage on your own, and good luck for your exams. Katlejo, over okay. to you.
Okay, thank you, <laughs> Haley. Thank you for that awesome show. Thank you, Great Tens. Remember that although the live shows won't be on, we will be back on the 16th of July, and there's also winter school from the 13th to the 15th. So download all your schedules, all your books, so that you have them with you all the time. So we'll see you after the holiday, and from us, have a great holiday and study really hard. And we'll be back for grade 11 after, after the break. Bye.